This top 10 intro is brought to you by Vectorstar Productions. So today, I'm joined by the senpai himself, Nico BBQ. Hey, what's up guys, Nico BBQ here. Alright, so let's talk about the 20 worst Mario Kart retro tracks. I won't be including the Super Circuit retro tracks because they were never deemed retro back in the day, or really now. This list is based on how unfun the tracks are and which tracks saw the least amount of improvements. So, without further ado, let's -a go! Number 20! Before we begin, just know that some of these tracks that are higher on this list aren't necessarily bad, but they're more or less not as great as I was hoping. Disclaimer out of the way, let's talk about Cheap Cheap Beach. This course was originally featured in Mario Kart DS, and it was one of the more forgettable ones. Brought back in Mario Kart 8, the only real improvement was the inclusion of being able to drive underwater a bit easier. You could obviously drive under the water for the DS version, but it slowed you down a lot. That's not the case for this remake. While I have to say that the remake looks pretty good, nothing about this track really sticks out. Which is kind of surprising considering you drive through a beach, a small forest, and a boardwalk. I guess what makes this track not as enjoyable as the others is that it feels so flat. Yes, there's a couple ramps here and there, as well as the gliding jump off the boardwalk, but aside from that, there isn't much variety. And that's not completely a bad thing. This is meant to be a starting course, but it just feels like it's missing some sort of oomph, if you know what I mean. Number 19. And here's another retro track from Mario Kart 8. This one is Dry Dry Desert, which also originally came from Double Dash. What's interesting about this course is that they actually made a couple substantial changes, although I'm not so sure they were all positive. The most blatant one is there's now an oasis around the end of the track. The original was all dry with wigglers that try to lure you near item boxes. All of that is now replaced with water. You can do tricks of geysers in the ground or of the little bumps. I guess this is an okay change, but it kind of defeat the purpose of the desert being completely dry. <laughs> Plus, driving through the water isn't that fun due to the blurred controls and slowdown. Some people like this change and some people don't. Also, if you get sucked into the huge hole of quicksand, a giant piranha plant no longer comes out of the ground and eats you, which is nitpicky, but I still wish that wasn't here. The course is still fun overall, but it could have done without the oasis. Number 18. And another beginner's track cracks this list, one that originated from Mario Kart 64. Luigi Raceway only does one thing to innovate, and that's allowing you to drive where the bleachers used to be. It's also a lot easier to hit the item box floating in the air from the hot air balloon. Of all the starter tracks, this one is one of the most boring ones to play. Granted, the music is incredibly catchy, as most of the Mario Kart 64 songs are, but usually you're just driving straight or taking a single turn. There's the section with the tunnel, which looks kinda cool, but it's just not enough to hold my attention. Now again, there's nothing inherently wrong with this track, but it's one that I easily forget about. It seems like every time I play Mario Kart 7, I completely forget that Luigi Raceway was even ported into the game. I would have liked to see a couple ramps in the grassy sections that you could use for gliding to take a quick little shortcut. That would have been a fun improvement, but they didn't do that, sadly. Number 17. Oh goodness, I'm putting a Rainbow Road Track on a worst list. Rip the like and dislike bar, am I right? If you've been watching me for a while, you know already that I'm not the most fond of the SNES version of Rainbow Road because of how bland it is. I do have to say that I enjoy Mario Kart 8's remix more than Mario Kart 7's because it feels like a slightly smoother experience. Having 12 racers in Mario Kart 8 forced the developers to make the track a bit wider to fit everyone a bit better, and that makes it more enjoyable because it's easier to make drifts and avoid the womps. And I'm okay with that because the penalty is very likely to end up being you falling off the stage. Mario Kart 7's remix just feels so meh. I never even get excited to play it, and Rainbow Road Tracks, for the most part, have never made me unenthused to play. I mean, it's kinda cool how the Womps have this rainbow glow, but that's the only thing that really pops out. This remix is just way too simplified. And I know Mario Kart 8's remix is simplified as well, but like I said, that course feels more established, and as a bonus, it looks drop-dead gorgeous. Number 16. Next up, we have the remake of Mario Circuit, originally from Mario Kart Super Circuit. 
This was another one of those courses that were just really forgettable, but even more so than Cheap Cheap Beach, considering you just drive on the road the whole time. The big gimmick in Mario Kart 8's remix is that a section of the stage is lifted into the air and is entirely an anti-gravity section. While this looks really cool, it doesn't really change how the course feels. Unfortunately, driving in anti-gravity feels exactly the same as just normal driving, aside from running into other drivers granting you extra speed, of course. The gimmick is really cool the first few times you play, but after that, you don't even realize the course is slanted high in the air. Mario Circuit doesn't really offer anything else of substance. Around the end you can smash into some tires, I guess you could say that's cool. And there's this ramp that you can glide off of. But you have to go way out of your way to even get there. Nah, who am I kidding? This course is just the usual boring starter track and that's all there is to it. Number 15 And next is a remix from the classic Mario Kart 64. Here we've got Mario Raceway, recreated in Mario Kart Wii. Now as a track in general, I wouldn't say that it's all that bad. I usually have some fun playing it, but there's nothing that really makes it stick out. In fact, I almost didn't add this to the list until I played it again, and realized that Mario Raceway doesn't really do a whole lot. The environment is typical, the only interesting parts are the big grassy mountains near the beginning and the pipe you drive through. Mario Kart Wii's remake allows you to do tricks off the end of that pipe now, and you can trick off the ramp near the middle of the track. That just isn't enough though, I would have really liked to see this remake do a lot more. Like, wouldn't it have been awesome to use the mountains in the beginning as a half pipe or something? Uh, it figures that we wouldn't get much out of this one. Number 14 I know, another track from Mario Kart 8. This is Donut Plains 3, and as you probably guessed, it came from the original Super Mario Kart. This is the point where the tracks go from being kind of fun to somewhat boring to play. Donut Plains 3 has some really interesting water effects in terms of it being mixed in with a muddy road. There's one part in the track where you can take a shortcut, and as you might have guessed, it requires a mushroom to get through quickly. Aside from that, there's really nothing else that's even marginally interesting about this track. I mean, when I think about this track, all I think about is how good it looks. There's nothing about the design itself that's memorable, it just feels like it's there. Number 13 this is where things are gonna get juicy. If you watch Nickel BBQ's top 10 best Mario Kart Retro Tracks list, you'll notice that Ghost Valley 2 from the SNES version, remade in Mario Kart Wii, is one of his favorite tracks of all time. Well, I say it's time to get our drama and get right into the friendly discussion. So look, I'm not gonna lie and say that the music and atmosphere is pretty well done because it definitely is. Ghost Valley 2 does its job showing that it's a ghost track, but nothing about it sticks out or is really all that monumental. Now sure, there's a little ramp that you can take halfway through for a shortcut, and at the end, you can go across a boost and off a ramp for a jump. So what though? There's a billion other tracks that do this and have more pizzazz. Now understandably, this track came from Super Mario Kart, so it's not that surprising that there isn't much of an offer here. So that's all fine and dandy, but why on earth is this on Nico BBQ's top 10 best list? I'm definitely eager to hear what he has to say. Number 12 And here's another SNES track that was remade in Mario Kart DS. Shoko Island 2 pits you in a chocolate world filled with strange track design, as well as a lot of crap to slow you down. If you look at the background, we're surrounded by what looks like chunks of poop. I'm not even trying to force in a poop joke here, seriously, that's what it freaking looks like! Similar to Donut Plains 3, this course also has a shortcut where you can use a mushroom to cut through the track and save some time. One thing I'm not a fan of about Choco Island 2 is the section where you're forced to drive through the puddles of mud. Your cart slows down and the controls get a bit slippery. You know, this wouldn't be so bad if the following part wasn't riddled with ramps. Like, seriously, these ramps look like they were randomly added in place. When you go over one, your cart flies into the air and loses speed, as well as control of where you're actually going. This wouldn't be that bad if the road before it was wasn't already slippery, so it's likely you'll go from the slippery road to accidentally going off one of the ramps and it potentially becomes this big chain reaction. I know this also sounds really nitpicky, but that's because it is. Number 11. 
And here we have the only Bowser's Castle featured on this top 20. Bowser's Castle 1 from Super Circuit and remade in Mario Kart 7. Once again, this course is just really generic. I know I've said this about some of the other tracks above this one, but at least those ones had some sort of interesting environment to look at or had a couple new things added into the table. This is just lava in a castle. Boy, how exciting guys. How many more times do we have to see this? To play Devil's Advocate, this style of course can actually work. I mean, look at how creative and insane the Bowser Castle tracks were in Mario Kart Wii and 8. They went buck wild with those ones, but this version adds nothing new to the table. It just makes me yawn to be honest. Do you want more though? If so, check out part 2 of our list by clicking the annotation or card right now. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and go subscribe to Nico BBQ. the man is a legend and has some awesome Nintendo content. Leave a comment and tell me what your list is for the worst Mario Kart retro tracks. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you for the 10 through 1 portion of this list.